What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Uh, today, be reacting to early, uh, the continuation of the early Muslim expansion. Uh, so it's been crazy so far. They've been uh, your hand in my way. Oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, we've been uh, been crazy so far. Uh, you yeah, know, they crazy. still been taking over a lot yeah, of land, just able. destroyed everybody. They. I wonder how many years does this take for them to do? Yeah, all yeah. They really had they been talking. About, they've been doing they've years. Been years. Yeah, yeah. They've been oh, sending right. years. They've been sending years. So, uh, sorry to get back into this video, guys. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that like button if you enjoy enjoy the videos, guys. And uh, on the road to 500 uh, subscribers, and we uh, let's get into the video. The Muslims found their final opposition in the White Palace, but chose to deal with it by sending forward yet another companion of Muhammad, Salman. A Persian by birth, he had converted to Islam after meeting the Prophet in Arabia, and now his heritage proved a crucial boon. What are you gonna I am actually you? one of you, I feel for you, he said upon meeting the defenders, and outlined the usual three choices, jizya, conversion, or death. After a short negotiation, the hopeless palace troops accepted the Islamic tax and surrendered. Tesiphon, jewel of the Sassanid mm. imperial superpower for over four centuries, was now in Arab hands, a people who had been a mere afterthought only years earlier. Wow, Separate bro. columns of Arab riders under Zura and Kaka galloped forth from the captured city almost immediately, moving in different directions in pursuit of their enemy. The spoils were plenty. For example, 11 priceless suits of armor and swords which belonged to Heraclius of the Byzantine Empire, the Turkish Kagan, and other world leaders. Other treasures now in Saad's hands included gold, jewels, and imperial regalia. With the Sassanid capital had come the empire's boundless wealth, and also the first major mass conversions of Persians to Islam. Salman the Persian in particular played a role in this religious change, preaching to his countrymen the values and beliefs of the new faith. Although Tesiphon and all the Sawad was lost to the House of Sassan, the Persians' resistance to their conquest by the Muslims would continue in the old heartland beyond the Zagros. We last left the Muslim Syrian campaign in the aftermath of Abu Ubaidah and Khalid ibn al-Walid's triumph over the Romans at Yarmouk. Exhausted from that long six days struggle. I know by, by, by the time he, they go in there, I bet they like everybody around this word or that like. I know they you heard it. Yeah, they heard it. Yeah, they had heard it because they gonna beat you, bro. No matter what though. No matter what they do, they gonna beat you. <laughs> like it's just, that's how it is right now. Struggle. The Muslims remained camped around Jabiyah for a month, collecting the bounties of war and recuperating their strength. The scant few of Heraclius' warriors who survived the massacre fled north to the relative safety of northern Syria, leaving Palestine at the mercy of the Islamic forces. What they do too much is they leave, the other people leave too, they leave to go to other cities and they just leave one city vulnerable. Like right here? Yeah. <laughs> Without an army to check his progress, Abu Ubaidah assembled his generals in October 636 to decide how best to exploit the situation. Some argued for an attack on the strategic linchpin of Caesarea, a coastal fortress whose garrison could be indefinitely reprovisioned by the Roman navy if besieged, but which could also serve as a potential beachhead for a counterattack if not taken. If the Muslims got it, the campaign for Palestine would be over. However, other commanders pointed inland towards a much simpler and symbolically enticing target, Jerusalem. Not only could this isolated city be strangled into submission with relative ease, but the loss of their holiest place would be a crushing blow to Roman Christian mm -hmm. morale. What? Unable to that's, come to a decision. That's how you get in there. That's how you yeah. start getting in their minds. Like, like dang, they took that time. Yeah, yeah. They start playing buying games. Abu Ubaidah sent a message to Caliph Umar asking his opinion. The reply was simple, take Jerusalem. So Abu Ubaidah led the Muslim army straight at the holy city. Realizing what was about to happen, Jerusalem's patriarch Sophronius secretly sent the holiest Christian relics, including the True Cross, off to Constantinople by sea. 
the raiding Arab Mobile Guard under Khalid reached Jerusalem sometime in November, just before the rest of the army, and this prompted the Roman garrison to pull back inside. Discovering to their chagrin that its fortifications had been reinforced after Yarmouk in anticipation of just such a siege, the five commanders, Abu Ubaidah, Khalid, Yazid, Amr, and Shurabil, nevertheless blocked off all passage in and out of Jerusalem. This state of affairs continued for four months in a mm. relatively uneventful siege of which few it be, details. It's crazy to me how long a siege, how long they be really yeah. waiting on a siege. Like, that'd be crazy. Like, four months Survive. is a long time. The situation in the city must have become unbearable, though, because in March 637, Sophronius offered to surrender Jerusalem if Umar himself came and personally signed the treaty with him. When these terms became known, Shurabil suggested that Khalid whose appearance was relatively similar to that of the Caliph, should impersonate their leader and secure a quick surrender. Wow! However, this attempt at deception failed the next morning, because Khalid was far too well known in the Levant by right. this point. Right, <laughs> yeah, the best when general. Did, Abu Abeda instead dispatched a message to Medina explaining the situation. A few weeks later, having made the long journey from Arabia, Caliph Umar arrived near Jerusalem. Khalid and Yezid greeted him, both dressed in fine silk clothing, but this annoyed Umar, a firm enemy of luxury and a proponent of the Spartan way of life. Seeing his generals in such a state of apparent excess, the Caliph picked up some pebbles and threw them at the two stunned men, shouting, Shame on you that you greet me in this fashion! It is only in the last two years that you have eaten your fill! The Caliph's rage was quickly sated when Khalid and Shirabil revealed that they were in fact still carrying armor and weapons beneath their fine outer garments. Drama aside, he quickly got down to business and negotiated with Sophronius, with the result that Jerusalem was opened to the Muslims by late April. It is said that the pact between Umar and Sophronius recognized Christians as a protected people with the right to practice their own religion in return for the jizya. But this covenant of Umar is probably apocryphal. Now that the holy city of Christendom was in his hands, the Caliph conferred with his commanders and then went back to Arabia. The Syrian army then split into they thirds. Basically got all, they basically got all the main cities, shoot, towns and stuff now, it just Spread is the Spanish really is crazy, bro. With Amr and Shirabil moving to reoccupy and secure Palestine, Yazid besieging Caesarea, while Khalid and Abu Abeda moved to begin the conquest of northern Syria. <laughs> With the situation in the region seemingly hopeless after the Yarmouk disaster, Emperor Heraclius sailed from Antioch and withdrew back into Anatolia, intent on consolidating Byzantine military strength and protecting the remainder of his empire. Once the ship departed, it is said that Heraclius said the words, Farewell, a long farewell to Syria, my fair province. You are in enemies now. Peace wow. be with you, O Syria. What a beautiful land you will be for the enemy's hands. Mm. Despite this probably, effective, probably. Ab effective abandonment, some of the Roman garrisons were still determined to resist the Arab advance. From Jerusalem, a 17,000-strong force under Khalid and Abu Ubaidah marched unopposed to Damascus, and then even further north to Emesa. From there, Khalid was dispatched with his elite mobile guard to Chalcis, modern Kinesrin, but was intercepted on a plain at nearby Hazir by 7,000 men under the town's Roman commander, Menes. He deployed his limited forces in three divisions, a center and two wings, placing himself at the forefront. Khalid charged with his Arab cavalry, and soon enough a fearsome mounted engagement was underway. After only a short amount of time, however, Menas was slain amid heavy fighting, and his troops, who loved their general, went wild with fury. Mm. Despite their numerical inferiority, the Roman troops matched the Muslims pound for pound in the head-on clash, this. pushing them back a go. little, but committing themselves too much. To exploit the opportunity, Khalid detached a unit of cavalry from one of his wings they go and the led it around the carry behind line, them, attacking his enemy from the rear like and it. defeating them. It is said that not a single Roman survived this engagement at Hazir. 
Following this victory, in June 637, Felipe like, raided on Calcis itself, where the garrison was stubbornly fortified in the town citadel. Rather than launching an assault, the Muslim general merely demanded those inside and the defenders surrender, which they did soon after. Abu Ubaidah rejoined Khalid at this point, and the pair moved north to Aleppo, where they defeated a minor Byzantine force commanded by Joker in a pitched battle outside the city. Much like at Calchis, the Romans retreated into their fortifications, a hilltop citadel outside Aleppo itself. Joachim sallied out a few times in an attempt to break the siege, but failed, and by October 637, God, the city was like in that, Arab bro. hands. The this greatest crazy, Roman city bro. I never in Syria, seen anything Antioch, like this. was now close. To precipitate an attack on it, Abeda sent a strike force to deal with the garrison at Azaz in the north, so that no Roman units could hit them from the flank as they were taking Antioch. This was done swiftly, and when the strike force returned, Abeda's advance on Antioch began. When the Muslim army was 12 miles from one of the urban jewels of the Byzantine Empire, they were met at an iron bridge over the Orontes River by a powerful Roman army who had come from Antioch. Although the details of this Battle of the Iron Bridge are also unknown, it is clear that Khalid used his mobile guard to superb effect, crushing the Carries Romans in a battle crazy, whose bro. casualties were only exceeded by Ajnadain and Yarmouk. In the wake of thousands of fleeing enemy soldiers, the Muslims approached and besieged Antioch. But taking the illustrious capital of the east was an anticlimax. Only a few days into Abu Ubaidah's investment, October 30th, the weakened city surrendered on terms and its defenders were permitted to withdraw north unmolested. Having cleaved the Eastern Roman Empire into two disconnected pieces, Abu Ubaidah dispatched Khalid on a daring cavalry raid across the Taurus Mountains and into the right, Tarsus region. To while the dispatch a lot of troops, they just, they like little. They, but they, it's the army though. They, they really can't do nothing, bro. It's just they just full steam in the hell on them. The supreme commander himself thrust south down the Mediterranean coast capturing seaports such as Laodicea, Gibala, Antaridos, and Tripoli, making it impossible for Emperor Heraclius to use the superior Roman navy to bring armies into the Levant. Although fighting in the area was far from over, by late 637, most generals of the Syrian campaign settled down to rule their respective regions as governors. At Hulwan, Yazdegerd III was still eager to salvage his crumbling empire after the loss of Ctesiphon. To do this, he ordered the main Persian army under Miran and Khurizad to halt their retreat and turn to face the invaders near Jalula. Armies attempting to push north past the riverside town were forced to march through a narrow gap between the Tigris' yeah, Diyala tributary to the west side and an area of barely passable broken ground to the east. If Miran's 20 to 30,000 could hold this position, the remainder of northern Suwad and Sassanid territory east of the Zagros Mountains would be unassailable. With the aim of converting Jalula into an impenetrable fortress <laughs> able to resist to any enemy thrust, Miran immediately started digging in. A ditch was excavated three miles to the south, which connected the broken ground to the river blocking the gap. Behind this trench were a number of other fortifications, really? artillery, and thousands of Persian archers, while in front were placed an array of wooden anti-cavalry caltrops. Recruits were mustered, armed, and trained from the local area, and provisions were gathered from around the nearby countryside. Jalula was to be a crucial battle. The moment Sassanid defensive works began around Jalula, Word reached Saad in Tessiphon that this was happening. As the Muslim general was just as keen to seize the fertile northern Suwad as his Persian enemies were to keep a hold of it, and wanting to push the defensive frontier eastward, Saad sent his nephew Hashim bin Utbah with 12,000 troops to reduce the Persian position. Hmm. In order to prevent reinforcement or retreat, Saad also dispatched 5,000 men to deal with Persian governor Intak's garrison at Mosul. After several attempts at taking that city by storm, 
Muslim spies managed to secure the defection spies, of the really? did not see that coming. in a betrayal which led to the fall of Mosul. In the main force heading for Jalula during March 637, Hashim brought with him many companions of Muhammad, as well as the ever ferocious Kaka ibn Amr. Also he in the Muslim ranks were several as well. thousand Persian troops, along with Sassanid officers who had joined them after Tessiphon. When the Arabs and their Persian units approached the Jalula Gap, all right, guys, we're gonna stop right here. Uh, we're gonna get to this battle and the battle of Jul it should be Jalula uh, in the next video, guys. If you want to see that one, hit that uh, subscribe button, guys. Hit that like button. Uh, been a crazy, crazy series so far, bro, because they is expanding yeah. like I've never seen this. Nobody group. stopping them, and that's the rate they going as well. They going this rate is big time. Like, but I, I, it seemed like that, but you mean when they be saying like it's, they didn't get it to November, then four months. Yeah, it's but still time. though, yeah. it, like they all they put in a surrender and they surrendering like there ain't no match. So guys, let us know if you want to see it by hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button. If you're new to the channel, guys, it only takes a second to do. Also, comment below what other videos you want us to react to. And got any more comments for this video, guys, let us know. And we see you guys in the next video.